Grand Rising, good morning, good evening around the world. So I come to you to report um, my experience um, while I was at the uh, Shadowlands, as I call it. You know, I will never in my life tell people or anyone, thus I'm allowed to tell them where these Shadowlands are, as I call it. Okay. Because it's got to be shrouded in secrecy, all right? Uh, from what I was told, the guides, spirits, ancestors, deities, etc., uh, cryptos, as I call them for short, uh, cryptoids, skinwalkers, other deities and beings out there, elementals, they don't want people to know where they invite me to, okay, for their own personal reasons. <clears throat> <clears throat> pardon me spiritual communication and i think i'm gonna step outside and talk to y'all because i hear the crows going off so let me go on out here and see about my friends let me go see about my booskies out here my crow friends and see what they talking about out here you know because i hear them going off as soon as i start talking they was quiet until i started talking baby because see death is here mm -hmm. the death god has opened her mouth one of the death gods have opened her mouth, meaning me, to start talking. So now I hear them going off back there in the backyard. So I'm going to go out here. Now, usually when I go out here, they get kind of quiet. So let me go out here and see if they're going to be quiet. And if they are, then I'll just continue talking when I go out here. Just one second. Okay, well, when I came out here, they got quiet, all right. And it's so hum uh, humid, y'all. And... Okay, now they done started back up. I decided to come out the front door instead of the back door. But the hubbub is going on in the backyard. So I'm going to walk around here. It's so hot and humid out here, y'all. I've been wearing my glasses a lot more lately. Just, you know, because I wanted to. Who is this back here doing all this hollering now? Y'all like, you talk to the birds like they people. Y'all, you talk about the birds like they people. Well, they do have spirits. Birds are highly symbolic in the spirit realm. What's all this hubbub back here now? Y'all doing all this hollering for? And the cicadas have been very, very loud lately when I come out here. Anyway, so I'll go back to what I was talking about. So I went out to the Shadowlands and I'm not allowed to tell where they are. At least not unless they changed their mind later. But they specifically told me as I was walking out there. They told me before, but they reminded me as I was walking out there. Don't ever tell people where you come to talk to us at. And um, and uh, they just left it like that. So let me tell you my experience. Uh, you all have heard me talk about some of the spiritual warfare that I've undergone, undergone lately. And how um, I saw it, my, my spiritual experience, um, the things that I did, you know, that I was allowed to talk about, and all of that. You all heard me discuss that. Now, mosquitoes, fuck, fuck, y'all, fuck that. I'm going to have to go back in the house. Because these motherfuckers are swarming me, bitch. And I'm not, I'm not about to go in the house with like five, five bites on me just to talk to y'all. Fuck that shit. It just rains. And it's just like the, the humidity is so fucking high. These motherfuckers are like ridiculous back here. Fuck that shit. And I, I don't have my candles lit. My citronella candles. I just decided to walk out here. Because most of the time during the day they're not bad. But shit they bad today because the humidity is high. Real high. That's why when I walked out my glasses started fogging up. But okay now I got a crow. This crow usually speaks to me. Okay, he's, he's kind of far off, so you probably can't hear him. But I'm going to go back in the house and talk. Fuck that. I ain't fighting these damn mosquitoes today. Okay, y'all, my bad. A mosquito barely even landed on me, and I can still feel itching from that. But anyway, I'm back inside. So, I've shared with you all my recent 
um, adventures in spiritual warfare, okay, and share with you some things that um, my cousin and sister um, endured as well. And when I was on my way out to the Shadowlands, they made sure, meaning the spirits, ancestors, guides, gods, etc., made sure to let me know not to ever, they reminded me on my way out there, not to talk about where that is. Now, y'all agents and shit already know where it's at. Y'all people that watch me and shit, y'all techie people and shit, y'all agents across the world in different governments, including the U.S. government, the Russian government, and other um, countries. Y'all agents already know where the fuck my shadow lands are, okay? Because y'all already, already be listening to me 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Y'all watch me through my phone screen, okay? Y'all watch me through my computer screen, bitch. And I'm not calling you a bitch. This is just a colloquialism. I be covering my motherfucking cameras and shit. But y'all be watching a bitch through the screen. I told y'all the G's. The government. America. Russia. All of them be doing that shit. They watch you through your motherfucking tablet screen. Your, your phone screen. And your computer screen. So if you have a computer or a desktop in your bedroom. Where you get dressed and stuff. You might want to cover your motherfucking screens up when you're walking around naked unless you want these agents and whoever out there watching you to see you uh butt booty ass naked okay naked naked you want them to see you naked then you 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 go ahead and get undressed in front of this screen i'm not that type of person okay so <laughs> i cover my shit up at night whenever i'm offline that shit is covered up okay same for phones. I put my phone's face down. Now, when I'm up during the day moving about, then okay. But I use it. I put them face down, or I have a cover. Now, they already know where the fuck is at because they follow. They watch where I go all the time. People like me, with high level spiritual gifts, are constantly monitored. Yes, people call it being a targeted individual. There are absolutely bad things that go along with being a targeted individual however however there are some good things if you're okay now let me just say it like this if you're if you've been very <laughs> if you've been very disrespectful to murka bitch you are going to get the the uh short end of the stick when it comes to being a targeted individual but if you've been respectful overall and i don't mean kissing ass i mean like if they have a respect for you spiritually and as a person then they're not gonna do all kind of crazy shit to fuck up your life like they'll actually look out for you you know um i actually questioned the guys and the spirits about this and um i asked if these governments uh were looking out for me and protecting me and they said yes okay um so i've been feeling watched for a very long time i know i'm watched okay so they already know where my shadowland area is um and that's that's okay or whatever because they know how to keep secrets but my experience was one such that I knew that I had to go. Okay. Uh, I knew I had to handle some business to keep it kind of, you know, succinct. And so I, I got up at the time I was told to get up, got dressed, uh, and set off like I usually do with my hiking pack, my tactical backpack on my back. And I set off uh, into the darkness like I usually do, okay, uh, and let me tell you first, the first thing that happened was, firstly, they specified that I was to go on a specific day, 
date number the number of the day was significant the day of the week was significant and they were just like this time this day the moon was in a certain phase it was a certain day of the week uh consecrated to certain gods and deities and when i the, the first thing that happened was as soon as i got to walking out there i heard a train now mind you it's the wee hours of the morning as soon as i got to walk in here come woo, woo. i'm like oh shit oh shit Cause see, I ain't never heard no motherfucking train out there. Any other time I've gone, I hear them. I hear the trains during the day, but I stopped as soon as I got to walking good. I hear the train, and so I turned around and I started listening because my hearing's very sensitive, and I started listening and I could tell which direction the train was blowing. And I'm like, okay, so I listened for a minute and I went. I was trying to see whether the the horn was getting closer or going further away. I was trying to determine which direction the train was going. Because I'm like, if it's coming this way, I got to get my motherfucking ass out of the way. Okay? So, I kept, I was like, oh shit. So, I pull out my pendulum. I stopped in my tracks, listened Heard the train, listen, and then I pulled out my pendulum. I said, is this train about to come through here? Like, is I said, is this train coming through here? Uh, is it going to come through here is what I said. And the pendulum said, yes. And I said, is this train going to come through here before I get off these uh, places that I'm walking? And before I get back home this morning, is the train going to come before I go back home? Because it, it's a distance for me to walk. Uh, there and back and uh, they say yes and baby don't you know that train came through five motherfucking minutes later that I saw the fucking light way down at way down like a mile and a half down and I was like she then you know I got my ass out the fucking way I'm gonna just say that I got my ass out the motherfucking way bitch about a hundred a hundred fucking cars came through and then when it went on by I kept going to where I was going okay as I go along my pathway at night, I cross uh, some low-lying lands, which would be like swamp lands. I cross fields. I cross um, hallowed grounds, as I would say. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the, the route that I take a lot is near a cemetery. There's actually two. I actually go a route that's in between two cemeteries. So it's a lot of spiritual activity out there. There's a mile marker that I passed that is got the number three, three, four on it that um is connected to my readings. OK, and um I didn't even know, like I just saw it one day and I'm like, oh, shit, that's that three, three, four that was connected to my threshing floor reading that I did months ago on karmics who were attacking me. So as I'm going along, if they tell me like. Some, so I'm walking, right? Like, you know, like anybody would be hiking along a path. I'm walking and I'm hearing sounds. When I went out uh, there on the May 30th or May 31st, 2021, full moon slash lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, the veil was very thin that night. That was the night I told y'all who, who heard that, uh, that I could see the spirits, the orbs, they were like twinkle lights. I could see them with my plain eyes. I mean, I, I wear glasses usually when I go out there just in case I get something in my eye. I don't have to worry about my contacts. I wear my glasses, right? Because if you get something in your eye when you have contacts and you have to take them out, you have to wash your hands and all that. So I usually wear glasses when I go out there. Um, but because it is like going out into the forest pretty much. I mean, it is wooded. So... When I went out there that time, I could see the spirits all around. Okay, and I said that they looked like hyper white twinkle lights, orbs. They were orbs, okay? They were very tiny, but you, I could see them with my eyes. So the veil was very thin that night. I didn't see them. I saw a few this time when I went, but it was nowhere near as many visible as it was that night on that lunar eclipse. That super moon in May, super full moon plus lunar eclipse. 
yo that shit was crazy <laughs> okay um then that was a night where there were two barred owls out there two not one two barred owls out there barred owls are highly highly significant to the occult in the spirit realm okay so when i'm walking along if they tell me to stop and pick something up or they tell me to stop and listen or they're like i'm getting so many codes so many my my all my senses are on like on fire i'm looking every you know even though it's dark i can see in the dark if there's orbs um if there's shadows um animal sounds insect sounds if i'm walking along and they say pick that stick up it could be just a, tr a piece of a tree branch if they tell me to pick it up i'm gonna pick it up if they tell me pick up that rock i'll pick it up and i'll put it in my backpack and i'll keep going this shit has been happening since i was a little girl and you know i'm, I'm sure parents some parents might get frustrated with their kids collecting rocks but you don't know why your child is collecting rocks and little sticks and stuff my children started doing that and i always let them do it and they would come home from school mama look at this rock i found on the playground okay baby put it up put it up there on your little shelf where your other rocks is at mama uh and my daughter started picking up sticks when she was a toddler too she do they do they in the same line of being spiritually gifted like that and connected to nature like i am so i, I always let my children do that i still do it as an adult they tell me to pick up stuff like they'll tell me to pick up certain rocks so i'm walking along and periodically as i'm going now mind you i'm walking a couple of miles there and back pitch black only light i have is my cell phone flashlight uh next time i go i'll probably have a different flashlight because cell phone flashlight is bright but it ain't that damn bright but it's so motherfucking dark that even if even with a flashlight plus a flash it's hard to take a picture that's how fucking dark it is out there okay under the full moon it was brighter because that was a super moon and it gave a lot of light but it, it's still black out there we just got off of a full moon so the moon was waning but still it, it's still very dark out there so i can imagine on a new moon how black it is out there i haven't gone out there on a new moon yet but i will eventually as called i only i only go when they call me out there when they don't call me i don't go so the most high in the spirit realm moved me to this location because i have this ability to be right next to double triple really let's see is it full full motherfucking crossroads within a walking distance of my house and two cemeteries so they put me right in wait full crossroads wait one one two technically four crossroads yeah and two cemeteries and two churches all within walking distance of where i live there's swamp there's uh there's there's uh other you know um magically significant areas okay in within this area okay so as i'm going along they're telling me to pick up little stuff here and there i notice a few other little things i pick them up i get to a certain point right and i they said pick that up and i noticed it in the darkness and i'm like okay so i stopped i picked it up and as soon as i picked it up i noticed to the right of my foot right outside of the pathway that i walked was a big ass fat ass caterpillar i ain't never seen no motherfucking pet caterpillar like this before in my life i may have seen them on a nature documentary but i've never seen them in person is my point i've never seen one in anybody's yard i've been across about 31 different states in the u.s i've been overseas and back i've never seen a caterpillar like this i've been to arizona these caterpillars are uh, native to arizona virginia north carolina south carolina um i think they might be also found in georgia tennessee alabama so they're around the the uh atlantic mid-atlantic basin down through the southeast across the the gulf and across through to arizona that's where they're found 
this and and they're probably in Tennessee, Arkansas, and Kentucky too. Uh, they may extend further than that, but this particular caterpillar I've never seen in my life. And the couple of times that I've been out there to what I call the Shadowlands, I never saw a caterpillar or any kind of worm before. So, matter of fact, I don't see any insects when I go out there um, other than the occasional, you know, little gnat that may get caught. Uh, I can see it in the dark in the line of my flashlight. That's it. So, I noticed this big-ass caterpillar. This mofo was, like, five inches long. Like, it was, it was, so my foot is, like, six inches. I have a small foot. I wear six and a half. I can wear a five and a half in boys, maybe a five if the shoe is cut big. Okay. This caterpillar was half the length of my foot. And it was green, and it had, like, V-stripes, like, white and red v stripes it was a big ass caterpillar had a horn a stinger on its tail so i knew not to touch it i don't touch them anyway i used to touch little certain types of caterpillars when i was little but i don't touch them bad boys no more okay i, I stopped doing that that was childhood <laughs> okay i don't touch them no more all right um so i had never seen one and the caterpillar was directly beside me parallel to my right side so it was on my right just outside the path and it was just going along moving away from me so i said hmm. i tried to take a picture of it it was too fucking dark out there for me to get a picture but the caterpillar stuck in my mind so i just watched it for a moment picked up what i needed to pick up watched it for maybe a few more seconds and then i kept walking got to where i was going okay um as is what happens when i always go out there there are strange sounds there are sounds of things that i can't identify i it's not a cow it's not a horse it's not a goat it's not a dog it's not a cat it's not an owl it's not a turtle dove it's not a raven it's not a you know it's not a finch i don't know it's not a cardinal i don't know what this thing is that makes noise out there but whatever the fuck it is, it makes, I hear that shit when I go out there. Now, it ain't no pig either. It ain't no cows. You know, it's not any livestock. I've never heard any animals make a sound like that before. So that tells me it's probably not human. Whatever it is, whether it's spiritual and something making noise from the other side, or whether it's a cryptoid, like a skinwalker, a dogman, lichen, whatever is whatever that is that makes noise out there i hear it every time i go out there and it's like as i'm approaching i start hearing it it's it's not i can't hear it from far off and my my hearing is very good but when i get close it's like it's almost like an acknowledgement and the sound starts going off with whatever this creature is i'm going to call it a creature because i've never heard anything else make a noise like that i haven't heard bison or buffalo make noises like that any kind of known animal okay and I'm very good in biology, so I, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to say it's spiritual or it's, it's cryptozoological. So I hear that. I do what I need to do. Okay. I was given specific instructions. You know how in horror movies, they show the moon and the clouds floating underneath the moon? I looked up at the sky, and even though the moon was waning, like 90 six or 95 percent waning the clouds were floating under the moon just like you would see in a horror movie and so i looked up at the moon and i was like this shit is eerie as a motherfucker but i don't i'm not afraid of that kind of stuff like that combined with the weird noises and stuff because i've had so many spiritual experiences in my life and rem and those of you that have listened for a while i may remember me telling you that the, another time when I went out there um, on the May 30th full supermoon, they snatched a spirit. They snatched something off of me. When I turned to walk away, they snatched. It was like somebody just grabbed, a, like if I had on a coat. It's like somebody just grabbed the back of my coat and snatched it. And I got weak in the knees and almost went down on my knees on the ground because it just like, it pulled an energy off of me and out of me. And that was somebody that was riding me like a fucking hag like a parasite they snatched that person off of me all right if you want to hear that experience 
um i'll try to find the exact video i set it in and put it in a box if i don't put it in a box then i wasn't able to remember which exact video i detailed that in but i think i'm pretty sure yeah I'm, it's coming up in my mind's eye now which one it was so i'll put that in the box so you can go listen to that if you want and um so last time they said i went out there there was something on me they snatched the shit off of me i've been out there before after that i've been out there since then since they snatched the shit off of me and handled some motherfuckers for me i've been out there since then but they didn't they didn't have anything like they didn't snatch anything off of me since then but they did handle motherfuckers that i th that i gave to them I, I i threw them to the wolves these people i threw them to the wolves so my journey this time was I threw somebody else to the fucking wolves. When I got back, so I had a, a fine journey back. On the way back, as I'm leaving, dog starts barking. Oh, 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 oh. Just, just like motherfucker. When they snatched that fucking person off of my back that was riding me like a, a hag. I'm about to say like a hog, <laughs> like a hag. In May, the dog started barking in too. So, I was specifically told after I said thank you for dealing with this situation. Because when I go out there, I talk to them out loud. I don't do no telepath. I just tell them straight up. <laughs> and I said thank you. And as I said, thank you. They said, you welcome. We got it. They didn't say it out loud. It was telepathic response. And they said, and when you turn around to leave here, don't you look back not once. I know not to do that anyway. But they specifically told me this time because they said, you're not going to want to see what come in this pathway. You can be brave as you want to be. You're not going to want to see what come out of these woods here behind you. Okay. So I did what they said. As I'm walking away, dogs barking. I said, okay, that's, that's why they said you're not going to want to see what it is because that dog was barking at, at something. I don't know what it was. I'm just going to say it was either a skinwalker or a werewolf or, or some kind of other cryptoid creature. The dog was barking like that because the dog didn't bark at me coming up. The dog started barking when I turned my back when they told me don't fucking look back. You don't want to see what's going to come up out of here. So either the dog was barking at a creature or some kind or the dog was able to see spirits. Either way, the dog just went off. That's also tied to Jezebel. That's also tied to this motherfucker that was recently lying on me that wishes, wish they could be my fucking hellhound. Because, you know, Cerebus is a transliteration, is an anagram of Cerberus. Cerberus is H Hades or Pluto's hellhound, the three-headed dog of hell. This person lied on me and played all them fucking games. So that dog started barking out there. That was synchronistic, not just for Jezebel, but for Cerberus. The hellhound of Hades. I told them I'm a death god. And that all those deities and beings respect me. I don't lie about that. I wouldn't lie on them. So I turned my back and I moved on. Back on towards home. And um, as I was on my way back, a white cat crossed my pathway. A white cat with black spots. It went real quick. It was almost like I didn't even see it. It, it crossed my pathway and then it kind of sat off to the side, like sat down and just stared at me. But it was so quick and the cat was so, the cat had a ghost essence to it. It wasn't a ghost cat, I don't think, but I can't be sure. Oh, they said, yes, it was a ghost cat. Hold on. Was that a ghost cat, y'all? Yeah, they said it was a ghost cat. And the reason why I had a, I said I don't think is because the cat went across my pathway. It sat down and looked at me. And then when I looked closer, the motherfucker wasn't there. The same spot it sat down in and looked at me for a moment, it wasn't there. I mean, I'm talking, I took two or three more steps and it wasn't there. So that's why I'm saying I'm, I don't, it wasn't a real cat. 
Fast forward. I didn't have no problems. Got home. Took a shower because it was super humid and hot. Took a shower and I went to bed. By that time, the sun was almost coming up. Today, like the caterpillar stayed on my mind that I saw. The train blowing through. And um, today, I just now, about 35 minutes ago, I looked up the caterpillar. It's called a Carolina Sphinx moth caterpillar. I will put a picture of the moth that it turns into as my thumbnail on this video slash podcast episode. They said, look up. Now, Sphinx, remember, I'm from Kemet. Egypt. The Anubis Oracle cards that I use, the Sphinx comes out for me. In those cards, the Sphinx has a special meaning. The Sphinx is a guardian. The Carolina Sphinx moth is also known as, the, the caterpillar is known as the Carolina Sphinx moth caterpillar, also known as the tobacco hookworm. We know that Native American ancestors and spirits love what? Tobacco. Hookworm. The scythe of the death god, Hades, well, I say uh, the Grim Reaper, the scythe of the Grim Reaper and the scythe of Santa Muerte is like a hook. Okay. Who else had a hook? Candyman. Okay. Jack the Ripper. These are death energies, right? Now I'm channeling this part, but the literal information that i looked up is called a carolina sphinx moth caterpillar and it turns into something called the carolina sphinx moth which is known as sphinx uh Calim calamie or also uh, i think it's called sphinx larista is the name of the moth when i they said look up because they teach me all kinds of stuff and tell me what to do they said look up they're not telling me to look for them because they already know they're telling me look up what the Carolina Sphinx moth symbolizes spiritually. So I searched Sphinx moth spiritual symbolism or spiritual meaning. It said the Sphinx moth represents death. And that train blew through and had I been in its way, that would have been death. That was spirits coming through. Also, my uh, sis was saying that the moth also represents the fae, the fairies, which it does. I didn't even think of that, but it does. So I told you that the motherfucker that was attacking me got their wings tore off, right? I told you that they're going to die for what they've done, right? Well, that sphinx moth represents death. They are going to get theirs. That's why they tried to say, oh, don't let Lord let the Lord cast judgment because you got enough on your plate. No, I'm supposed to cast judgment when I'm told to cast judgment. Death is on her fucking ass. And that moth, that caterpillar and that moth was just a symb symbolic uh, meaning of it. Let me also tell you where this ties in. And this was the, the channeling they gave me. They said it ties into the Mothman prophecies. That's a Native American lore. Didn't I tell you that tobacco hookworm is the Carolina Sphinx moth? It's the same thing. And that's Native American ancestors. And it ties into the tobacco and um, the fields. Okay, the killing fields and the Mothman prophecies. The Mothman is a shapeshifter. Let me read you a little bit about the Mothman. Because they said, yeah, this is tied up with the Mothman prophecy. So read a little bit about that. So let's check this out. By the way, I will put the website where it tells the moth meaning there's different moths that have different meanings the silkworm moth means one thing another moth means something else you know different butterflies mean different things different bugs you know and by the way shout out to mama yo uh yamaya yeah shout out to her and shout out to papa ogun okay because it was plenty of motherfucking yamaya's little uh friends <laughs> out there too okay and they kept 
uh every time i saw them they were walking in the direction that i was walking it's like they were walking alongside me they would get out my way now but it was like they were always going in my direction it was never like coming at me they was always going along with me they would come out of their little hole and then dart across my path and then dive back in another hole and i'm like yeah this is yeah yeah ej moja people out here in the form of what Pa uh, palmetto bugs or what, what people call colloquially water bugs they was out there in full motherfucking effect and it was every two or three steps or i would say every five to seven steps i took they was out there okay <laughs> they was out there in full effect okay mothman prophecies now if y'all saw that movie mothman prophecies baby hmm i'm gonna have to go back and watch it i'm gonna have to go back and watch it i'm gonna have to read uh refresh myself it came out in 2002 january 25th 02 starred richard gear okay now of course throughout history um there have been sightings of the mothman the mothman prophecies as a movie with richard gear is based on a true story okay now if you want to go into the native american lore you can look into that but let's look at this it says the mothman prophecies are based on a true story for centuries people have reported seeing huge bird-like creatures in populated areas around the world native americans have the thunderbird which is called different things according to each individual dialect across the ocean the chinese have something called the garuda g-a-r-u-d-a -A. other cultures spread across the globe have their versions of this creature whom pop culture has dubbed the mothman in recent years, Hollywood has produced a movie called The Mothman Prophecies, okay? There have been books and documentaries about this legendary creature as well, most notably the book by John Keel, also called The Mothman Prophecies, which preceded the movie by decades, so the book came out decades before the movie did. With all the Mothman sightings around the world, one would think there has to be more than just mass hysteria. How can people who live thousands of miles apart who have never met report the same sightings? In November of 1966, in the town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, circumstances concerning the Mothman grew to epic proportions. This motherfucker, Observer Cerebus Fire 17 Tarot, lives in West Virginia. There were numerous sightings in a brief 13-month time period. 13 is the death card in the tarot. The moth. This Sphinx moth represents death. 13 is the death card. That's my card. I told you I'm Hades and she wants, she wished she could be Cerberus, Hades doll. Hades is a death god. There were numerous sightings in a brief 13 month time period, all of which were mysterious and frightening as the months dragged on. Those people in Point Pleasant, West Virginia involved in the reports were harassed by equally mysterious and frightening men in black one lady even reported a scary man in black tried to force her into his car tearing her blouse in the process as she barely escaped others still have lived with the horrific images of their close encounters for the rest of their lives the whole ordeal over that 13 month time period culminated in a tragic disaster at the main street silver bridge which happened in december 67 i went somewhere where there was a bridge I had to cross under a bridge and I had to cross over a bridge when I went out there to the fucking Shadowlands. This person's going to die for what they did. And that ain't up to me, baby. That's up to them higher powers. It has been long rumored that the moth man, as well as we know the Carolina Sphinx moth, the Sphinx moth represents death. It has long been long rumored that the moth man is a harbinger or a warning of death. That whatever it is, it seems to appear just before disaster strikes. That's why that train came. Woo-woo! Train coming. For the people of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, that disaster happened in December of 67 as the Silver Bridge collapsed, taking vehicles and their passengers with it into the cold waters of the Ohio River. It was, at that time, the worst bridge disaster in American history. The forensic report said that it had been the 13th pin. Again, 13. The 13th pin on the bridge failed, which caused the bridge to begin swaying. Eyewitnesses reported the traffic load on the bridge was fairly normal for that time of day, so it wasn't overwhelmed. 
which put to rest the theory that the bridge was overloaded. Author John Keel, who authored the book, The Mothman Prophecies, claims to have received warnings about his return trip to Point Pleasant and that the warnings told him not to go back, meaning not to cross that fucking bridge. According to Mr. Keel, the source of the warning apparently knew he would have to cross that bridge on the very day of its collapse. 13 months and 13th bridge pin failing. A mere coincidence? Or was it something more sinister at hand? Death card. That's why I say y'all motherfuckers be playing with that tarot. You don't know what the fuck you doing, baby. You calling up some serious energies. You don't know what the fuck you be doing. A lot of y'all. Yo. <laughs> Another strange coincidence about the Point Pleasant, West Virginia story concerning the Mothman is that during World War II, there was an ammunition factory there, which by 1966, look, 1966, that's 1666 had fallen into a state of disarray and abandonment. The locals called this ammunition factory the TNT area, meaning for TNT explosives. And it was mostly avoided because of the dangers of the area. The area has dilapidated buildings that are used to store ammunition or that were used to store ammunition during the war, but it has long since been reclaimed by nature. So nature has overgrown that ammunition storage place it is covered by overgrown weeds and shrubs the whole area was fenced off and it was unlawful to enter as signs posted around the area warned it warned excuse me warned of the dangers contained therein linda scarberry was out with her boyfriend and another couple driving around this tnt area that november night in 1966 that's 11 1666 when the first sightings of the mothman occurred they claimed the first thing they noticed was a massive set of glowing red eyes hovering ahead of their car then a body started to take form which was kind of like a man but it was covered in hair didn't i just tell you about skinwalkers they have the body of men but they're covered in hair i told you about lichens and dogmen who also have a similar um archetype with you know a manly humanoid body and covered in hair except for the mothman can fly Miss Scarberry said she knew it was a man-like creature because she could see the details of its muscular build. The creature was said to have a massive set of wings which allowed it to fly, hover in space, and even abruptly change directions right even in, mid in mid-flight. It would have truly been a frightening sight to behold for any group of young friends. Note, the wings of the creature are the common factor of all of the Mothman sightings from even around the world. As such, the group, Linda and them, was terrified and they fled the scene immediately. They reported that as they left the area, they noticed whatever it was they had seen was following them. The chase reached a very high rate of speed, 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, and so on. In just a few short moments, the chase was reported to have reached a speed of 120 miles an hour and that the creature was still catching up to them. Shadows of the mysterious creature passed here and there, terrifying the passengers of the car as they raced away from what they perceived to be certain doom. The flying beast chased them all the way back to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where it suddenly disappeared. The group of frantically scared teenagers ran straight to the police station where they made the first report of the Mothman in Point Pleasant. The sheriff went out that chilly night in search of the Mothman driving around this TNT old factory area with spotlights on full uh, full brightness, but he didn't find anything. The creature had vanished as fast as it had appeared and without a trace. The only thing that was left was a group of teenagers and images of terror etched into their minds forever. 44 full on the clock on the timer. 12.38 p.m. on my clock, uh, 85 degrees, 13, 12.38 p.m., that's 1-1, one, one, that's 1-1-1 one, 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 and 11, 38-11, 1 one, 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 one. 44.22 on the counter. So it says, Pardon me. Other witnesses of the Mothman over the next year would also report swollen red eyes, severe headaches, as well as visits from bizarre men in black. These are the agents that I was wondering why I started out talking about agents. Now I know why. 
because this article that I didn't look up before I started talking is talking about men in black agents. Others still had vivid nightmares of catastrophes during that time period before the Silver Bridge collapse. Are the Mothman prophecies real? Was the Mothman there to warn the people of Point Pleasant of an unavoidable event? Or was the Mothman there to cause this event and then simply flutter away to another city somewhere around the world? Whatever the case may be, the legend of the Mothman lives on and the most recent Mothman sighting occurred in Colorado where a man encountered the creature living in his attic. This article, uh, let me see when it's dated. It doesn't say when it's dated, okay? But I'll link the uh, page in the box, okay? So, the Mothman appeared, okay? The harbinger of death, okay? And so, um, people play too much. People play too much. You know, when you steal energy for years... It's time for you to give that back. And a lot of times they don't have, because they were stealing energy, they don't have that. Like I said, karmic people don't have the light. They don't have the energy. That's why they steal it from others and see that it's not a problem for them to do so. They can't hold on to that energy. So when you've stolen so much energy and you've attacked so many people, you don't have nothing to pay that shit back with. So therefore, the only way you can pay it back is to give up your motherfucking life if you've been doing this. Okay. You don't have no coinage, you don't have no energy, you don't have no creativity, you don't have no divinity to pay none of the fucking karmic debt back that you have created, okay? And so that is why the moth has appeared as a harbinger of death, okay? And why people have been stripped of lands, titles, ranks, etc., powers, etc., okay? Authority, etc. What little authority they have is gone. That is why my ancestors and guys told me, don't you dare look back not once. Because you don't want to see what come across this pathway. Mm-hmm. And oh, let, oh yeah, let me tell you right now. They told me to do something special when I went out there. It was something kind of like leaving my mark. I had to leave something of mine. So that they called it marking your territory. They said, leave it. I had to leave something that has my essence on it and they said don't you dare look back not once because you don't want to see what's going to come out here so when people play with me you don't know what the fuck's going to come after you okay and you don't know when it's going to come but they were warned they think that all this spell work and running around is a game until they look up and they have to stare death in the face. Until they look up and they see something that their soul will never forget. That their minds will never forget. Okay. So, just wanted to share that with you. This is not a good old horror story. This is the fucking truth. The Mothman prophecies are based off of a true story. What I experienced out there is true. Okay, and the one person I didn't handle two people when I went out there, I didn't handle four or five or six. I, I took one person to the Shadowlands for the Mothman to deal with. Okay, mm hmm, and whatever else want to deal with them. So, see, just be careful when you play with me and other people who are divine, be very, very careful because you don't know who's protecting us. Not just flesh people, agents, powers that be, elite, secret societies, you know, powerful people, fancy people, you know, people in the know, other people with gifts. You don't know what out there that ain't living in no human body no more got our back. You don't know what the midnight train might bring to your town, baby. You don't know. So just be careful, okay? Just be careful.